Happy Piggy Love Day, everyone. Welcome to this huge collaboration with lots of people and um, with a good cause. Make piggies happy. Okay, so this is a fun one. I received my MDF heart for this collaboration and I could not imagine doing anything with it. No idea whatsoever. Oh, at the time I started playing with neon, so that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I did, actually, because now it's after the fact. Um, let me reach over and show you Deja Vu. Fluorescent Piggy. I also use Groovy. I think I actually used Hustle. Jam. Hustle is a little bit more intense than Groovy. Both hot, hot pinks. So it might have been Hustle. Sorry. This is Inferno and I used that as my cell activator. Well, I used Mosh. Sorry, my chair is squeaking. Dioxazine purple. Dioxazine, I never know. Golden. Amsterdam black. Oxide black. So, uh, like I said, I didn't know what to do with this heart. So I thought I'd put it onto something. And for that, I tried to figure out where it could be on my 20 by 20 canvas. So I decided to not do it diagonal. Straight in the middle, maybe a little bit down from the middle. And then I just did a background for it. I start with the Glidden Essentials. As always, that's my pillow, that's the vehicle for my colors. And this is Mosh Fluorescent Orange. And I will do this with all my colors. I will spread them out, try to cover as much of my canvas as I can. I'm not, I'm trying to be not too thick because lots of colors are gonna go on there. So thin, lots of coverage, lots of colors. And I'm actually going from light to dark. I'm making sure that all my paint gets used. And when I'm done with my mosh, I'll actually add my hustle. There it is. Now I'm sure it's hustle. I'm not too picky of covering each color because I do like coincidence even though I want to be in charge but the coincidence is a big part of this kind of art. And I basically just concentrate on the middle part because I know I will spin and tilt. I will also use a hair dryer so my paint will get spread out nonetheless. And what I'm doing in this painting is what I've done so many times before. I will just put my cell activator on top and at first I use a hair dryer which was not super successful. I haven't done this for a while. I was kind of wild, didn't pay attention of grabbing my paints at the right spot and moving it across. Nope, it did those wavy things and lots of the white is showing. But I'm not too worried about the outer part. This will get spun off. So since my hair dryer doesn't work, didn't work the way I wanted to, I used my mouth. That was not very good either. So I cover it up again with my paints and try this again. 
I did add more cell activator to my hair dryer blow and tried to fix it a little bit. And here I try the hair dryer again. I'm way more careful, way more away from my paints. I know if I will put my heart on top of my canvas, I don't have to worry about the middle part, but apparently I keep forgetting while I'm painting. So <laughs> it's hard to beat your routines. A little bit more blowing and um, I will put you on some happy music. Let you watch this process and then I will see you back in my shop. So now you've seen me paint a painting. Pretty cool one too. And it's fluorescent. So I mean you need to do something with that, right? It was a lot of thinking. Lots of thinking. Lots of thinking. Lots of thinking. Lots of staring into space. A lot of thinking. So I have this heart and I kind of want to put it on top of my painting which now I'm kind of committed to because I don't have that much time left. And um, let's go to the shop. So here we are at the shop. This is my little Makita router. It's a small round over bit in there. I'm just trying to ease the edges and make them round so it looks a little bit nicer. Get the inside of the heart as well. And there it is. And there's little Helga.
this is my primer that I'm going to use. Very important for MDF, primed from both sides and more than one coat. I give it a little sand, ease the edges, get the router marks out, stir my primer real good, have some coke, the Mexican kind with a real sugar. Get the outsides and the inside. Just make sure you get everything. After that coat I sand it lightly, get uneven parts out and put another coat on. And I actually have a CVX plywood right here and I trace my heart. Don't forget the little one. I want to elevate my MDF heart from my painting. That's the idea. So I cut out my plywood just a little bit smaller. I would say it was half inch smaller. I send it smooth. This way is a little faster. And um, I told you there's a lot of thinking involved and this is actually how this piece came to this world by doing. That's kind of how my brain works. I can't think about it as much as I want but while doing it I think wait a minute I could do something special with this. So I'm cutting out another little cut out there um, and I need that later. Those are my two hearts together. More thinking. More staring. More thinking here. So this is my painting, dry. And I have painted my MDF heart black. Don't worry about my plywood heart there. But you might already guess what I'm trying to do. And yeah, I'm drilling a hole in my canvas. I'm preparing it for resining, so I'm blue taping the sides and I also try to save my little hole that I drilled. Um, well, not trying to save the hole, just trying to frame it off so the resin won't run through it and disappear. Okay, to the resining table. Here's what you need. A respirator, a heat gun, a torch, clean containers and your resin. I use KS resin, the Elita version. It, um, it's a little bit thinner, releases the bubbles faster and a little bit more heat resistant when you torch. So be prepared. Make sure your piece is level. I shim my sticks up a little to adjust, but my tables are fairly level, so that's cool. It's, it's kind of cold at the shop, so I already mixed up my resin and put it in a hot water bath. So I guess what you could do is heat your resin up individually in their bottles and then mix it. Um, I don't know why I didn't do it. Uh, the, the warmth makes it thinner, better, appliable, and it releases the bubbles better. So here's the point where my camera will shut off. I might do a resin video in the near future and we can get into all that then. Try to cover it all, use different light sources, walk around it, check the edges, and I always add a little bit more to the edges after to make sure I got them all.
Welcome to the shop. This is the next morning. That's always the exciting part. It's the little terrier. This is something we are talking about in a minute. There it is. I built a little cardboard box to cover it up. And there you go. I did an okay job. Resin is really tricky, especially in a dusty shop. But I'm always amazed what depth the resin adds to a painting. Pretty cool stuff. Okay. What was that black thing, you ask? Well, funny story. We built this, me and my little shop helper. It's a floating frame. It's approximately a quarter inch gap all around my painting. And this is a little branding. So decided to do that in black, same black as the heart. Don't forget to sand between coats. I use 400 grit. Go lightly over the surface every time the layer is dry. And this is how it looks like. Isn't that cool? So what about that hard? There it is. This is my cutout. And I use wood glue and clamp it to my black heart. You might guess what the what the electrical stuff around it might be, don't you? You're smart people. But I'll get to that a little later. So we have the heart, which is flat black. The whole frame, which is flat black. Flat black. At this point, I'm not sure. The heart's gonna stay black. Depends on how much this guy is gonna be seen. I can't wait to see this in the frame. Uh, let me clean up the edges, get my tape out, and then we pre-assemble. Um, pretty freaking cool, guys. Pretty freaking cool. Um, now I have to wait till the hardest dry, assemble everything, and I think I'll show you that next. I'm really liking this and kind of not want to put a heart in front of that. Oh well, commitments, right? So here's my heart. I just unclamped it. Give it a quick sand for another coat of paint. And then I get rid of my old, yes you guessed it, LED strip. This was just a practice strip. I actually ordered a new one that is more powerful. The old one had was battery powered, but um, it, it was not bright enough. So this is me taping the new tape 
on the outer side of my plywood heart. I get to go around twice, which is great. That gives me a little bit more brightness and um, I'm just making sure that I will have enough cord. The cord will go through the whole of my canvas and down to the frame. Again, making sure if I have enough, because that would screw the whole thing up. So the black plug will go through this. It's a hole in the frame. Yay. More holes. Those are holes for the screws that will hold my heart tight to the canvas. So I clean up my little floater frame. I already pre-drilled it. Fits perfectly, but we knew that already. this around and secure it with four screws so that way whoever gets this piece is gonna be able to get to the light and change it out or whatever you need to do There's also a big hole in the back where you can get to the plug in case it's loose or you need to hold it while plugging it in. Because the cool thing about this, my power supply will have to be plugged into that little tiny plug that's inside my frame. So you can either hang it on the wall with, without your cable hanging out or if it's plugged in, you can just leave the cord on. Okay, there we go. It's all pretty solid, holds together well. You might not, maybe you don't want to lift it up from the frame, support it a little bit in the bottom because it's about 13 pounds heavy. Getting rid of sawdust and here it is. All I need to do is fiddle my cord into my little plug right there. I'm being way too careful. You don't have to be that careful. And then we got it right here. What do you think? Woohoo! So now you've been to my shop. That's where I built my spinners and built my frames, my canvases. That's where kitchens are being built and hopefully way more artwork. So what do you think about my light? What? You haven't seen it? Yeah, you did. Well, I guess not really in action. Let me fix that. Ready? <laughs> there it is. There's my little plug. So, just real quick. You know you can bid on this piece. All the information is in the description box. Go to the This Little Piggy group on Facebook. They should have all the information as well. Also, you can see all the pieces of art there. You have to go on the website, you have to register with your credit card so you can keep on bidding if you want to. Um, whoever gets this, wherever you are, remember this has an American plug. You can probably change it or use one of those adapters that you can get anywhere. If I can find one for you, just let me know. I will take care of it if you need me to. So this, this is my plug. And this is my painting.
I'm going to show you some better pictures in a second. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for your subscriptions, your likes. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for just witnessing my journey. It's a pleasure. Oinkers. That is it. One last thing. The last coat of this and it's still wet here, that's why you see the reflection, is chalkboard paint. So you can write on it the name of your loved one or, or draw something on it. You don't have to though, but you can. I won't show you how because the paint needs to dry and I do not have time. That was fun. Thanks everyone. Thanks Fluid Art Co. for those awesome pigments, for your love, for the positivity, and for being a friend.